Hi everybody, happy Friday night. My presentation is on moderation, mediation, and regression from the Andy Field textbook chapters 10.2 through 10.5. 10.2 covers how to install the process custom dialog box. This was written by Andrew Hayes and is available from his website, but I think the link moved since the field book was written, so the website I used was processmacro.org, download.html. Um, and Andy Field has a YouTube tutorial on exactly how to install and configure the process custom dialog box. So if you like to see where somebody clicks, um, I've linked here how you can walk through it in real time. 10.3 started discussing moderation. Moderation can be defined as a third variable that affects the relationship between the predictor and outcome variables. Moderation um, is also called sometimes interaction effect, and that means the combined effect of two or more variables. The field book had a really good image for this that was well described, so I enjoyed it, um, and I've shared it here. And it shows basically a conceptual idea of moderation, that when there's no moderation or no interaction effect, all of your variables progress on their own lines, and so everything stays sort of proportional to how it began in the end. But when there is a moderation or interaction effect, as on the second part of the diagram, uh, the change in one variable causes more changes in the other variables. So you end up, instead of a proportional plane, having it twisted and skewed as um, more of one variable plus more of a second variable equals much more of a third variable. How do we go about finding the moderators mathematically? We're essentially comparing three relationships. We're comparing the relationship of the predictor to the outcome, the relationship of the moderator to the outcome, and the relationship of the predictor and the moderator, or times the moderator, to the outcome. And then we're going to you know, answer some questions about, is only the predictor relevant? Does the mo is the moderator actually the real predictor? Um, or is there a synergy where the predictor and the moderator together are much more than the predictor to the outcome or the moderator to the outcome individually? To run this analysis in SPSS, we use that process tool that we downloaded at the beginning. Select your dependent, independent variables, and your moderators, and all the moderators go in the M block. If you're looking for moderators, you're going to be using models 1, 2, or 3 in the process tool. Um, and deal with whatever error messages it spits out. So I kept getting told that my variable names were too long because apparently they're limited to 8 characters or fewer. Um, so you have to adjust, but it tells you very clearly what it is that's stopping it from running. So it was very easy to clean everything up as it kind of walked me through it. If you want to graph it, you need to go to the options and tell it to give you the linear points for graphing, and then may need to retype those from that table it gives you into an actual spreadsheet in order to graph it. Um, and Andy Field suggests that if you are reporting your results, like in a paper, you should use the table rather than the graph. 10.4 covered mediation. Here the predictor predicts a mediator, and the mediator predicts the outcome. So A predicts C, which predicts B. So initially you might have thought A predicted B, and then you figure out there's this mediator that is actually the route by which A predicts B. In perfect mediation, A predicts C predicts B is true, and A without C does not predict B at all. Um, that would be a case of perfect mediation. So the predictor and the outcome really aren't linked except when they go through the mediator. Uh, the example I thought of for that was Storms can cause winds above 60 miles an hour, can cause tornadoes. Uh, storms without high winds, however, never cause tornadoes. Also, high winds without storms lack the rotation needed to cause tornadoes. So C doesn't directly cause B, A doesn't directly cause B, but when A causes C, then it causes B. So that would be that kind of scenario. How do we test for mediation statistically? Now we have to look at four relationships. Does the predictor predict the outcome? Does the predictor predict the mediator? And then do the predictor plus the mediator predict the outcome? And compare if the predictor plus the mediator is less strong than the predictor predicting the outcome. 
So basically comparing three and one. There's also a more advanced test you can do called the Sobel test to see if the alternate pathway, which is that A to C to B route, has significance itself, um, but Field doesn't advise using that test too often. He instead suggests we should report the effect sizes of mediation, and you can sort of standardize this by taking the regression coefficient of the indirect effect, so that ACB route, and dividing it by the standard deviation of the outcome variable, because that gets rid of whatever odd units you measured in in the first place, which got really weird when you did a regression. Um, and so it sort of standardizes it if you divide by something in the same units, because then you end up with something without units that you could compare to a different study. And that's often called the index of mediation. You can use a ratio with the regression coefficient of the direct effect, um, but this is very unstable on small samples, so that would only be useful in a large sample. But if you don't want to do it by hand, then we would use the process tool and its model 4 to get mediation, whereas 1, 2, and 3 did moderation. Thank you, Brad. Um, model 4's objective is to bootstrap the crap out of your data and give you confidence intervals on your significance as well. If the confidence interval does not include zero, then you likely have some indirect effect through that route. Categorical predictors and regression was 10.5. Since we can deal with binary variables like calling men zero and women one, then we can also dummy code any categorical variable with more than two cases um, into a whole family of binary variables and still treat them pretty much the same way. So you make your group of interest or your treatment group or your majority population that you're going to compare against always be zero and create a dummy variable for every other group in your categorical data. And then within each of those, you get a one if you belong to that group or a zero if you don't. And so I've made up an example here that follows. Thank you, Jenny, for this idea. Uh, so if you did a survey and the people who actually conducted the telephone part of your survey for you did not um, respond well to training and got anxious and stopped asking what is your sex and started asking what is your gender, you might get some really interesting responses. Um, so in this case, I've created a scenario where people responded that they were either male, female, sparkle bear, or nerd to the question gender when really you had meant to ask about sex. And so you decide, I don't want to throw out all the sparkle bears and nerds, but I want to actually still use my data, then you could create dummy variables to turn your category gender into a bunch of binary variables. So you'd make a dummy variable for male, where male would be the only one that got one and every other group in that would become zero, a dummy variable for sparkle bear, and a dummy variable for nerd, which I named with things less than eight so I could use it in process. Um, so there's a table here that shows that each group gets one in its own, except for your population of interest, which I picked female, so they got zero in every group, and so every group is being compared to them. To use your new dummy variables, they all go in the same M block of process, and R squared or an ANOVA can tell you if they offer better method of prediction than your prediction alone, either collectively or individually. So maybe we find out that sparkle bears are significantly different than everyone else, or um, that gender is a significant player as a whole compared to everything else. References here are our field textbook as well as YouTube video from Field and the Process Macro website from Andrew Hayes. Thanks guys, have a great weekend. I'll see you all on Sunday via Skype.